Hello everybody, welcome to the Saturday Hukulo webinar hosted by Hukulo TV and humancolony.org. Today we have Kira Newman who will be channeling Theos for us today. Yes, uh, we have our guests in the room, we have Christine, we have Alan, we have Jeremy, we have John Lee, we have Sheer, we have Shrone, we have TC, hi TC, and myself, and our YouTube viewers. So thank you for coming everybody, and um, Karen, what, what, what do you have for us today? <laughs> well, what I'll do is I'll go into trance and I'll uh, let Theos come through and they will take questions, anything you want to ask. I don't really, or they don't actually really talk about Griffith Near, so um, hold those questions for Jim or for Kim. Um, but anything else, life stuff, spirituality stuff, stuff, <laughs> anything you want to ask. <laughs> Nothing's off the table. Um, I, I like challenging questions, so um, the questions like, do you have a message for me are great, but I would prefer uh, some questions that have a something behind them um, and you know with, with a little bit of a challenge that way I get to learn as well so so anyway so I'll just go in um, oh okay one second okay the YouTube just answered in the back <laughs> oh you need to mute I got to hear myself just repeat the last part of the conversation okay so uh, it just take me a second, and uh, I'll own first, and then you'll see. They'll they'll announce themselves. And again, okay. so happy to do it. And much love to everyone. Glad to be here. All right. All right. Here we We are Theos. Greetings, Theos. Welcome. We are so pleased to be here with you. We are glad you have come today to share with us. We would like to say something to all of you. All righty. You have within you the greatest ability to be in contact with all that is. And while we are so pleased to interact with you, 
we would like to encourage you to access, to access your own connection for in that connection you will tap into all that is and for that moment your expansion can be accelerated once you go and it's not really a trip to take but more of an example of words we're using but once you go to that place where everything is one you will never forget the experience and your vantage point from which you see all of your experiences will change that is the true goal of ascension that is the goal that you should have and we encourage you to reach out to the divine so that you remember that you are in fact divine we like sometimes that people forget who they are but we also want you to remember so we would like everyone before we begin and we've never done this before but we would like to do it now we would like you to sit up put your shoulders back and your head in a space like Karen's head is in a very even way so that your breath can be even and we would like you to own with us we think it's best as you keep your microphones muted as the difference in times will be very strange for the listener but it's good to do because we will create now a sacred space in which we will have our interaction and we'd like you to come to where we are right now so that our soul connection can be the very thing that you experience we want to lift you up as we would say so that we and you can stand together in this bliss where we are so if you will if you are willing you don't have to but it is an invitation we'd like you to sit up place your shoulders back and we will ask you to take a deep breath in through your mouth and let the breath come down into your belly and hold it for just one moment and then on your exhale we would like you to emit a long stream of sound in the word of OM and hold that tone because that tone is like a phone number calling out to the universe it actually shifts your frequency and brings you up so we always say do it at least three times but you do it until you need to we will do it three four five times and we will try to feel you so we will begin again and we will lift you up and then we will begin this interaction so take your first deep breath in you can breathe in through your nose or your mouth it matters not hold the breath and let it out in a long streaming perfect oh
should begin to feel lighter now, a bit like you're floating. But this perfect silent place is the oneness. This is the place where we are all together in the perfection of the divine. This is the mind of God where you stand right now with your eyes closed. And one more deep breath in. Oh. Welcome. All my beautiful friends, you beautiful beings of light that you are, there is much love here for you. You are us and we are you. And we welcome you to our dimension. We are happy now to begin, but maybe now there are no questions. We do have a list of people prepared with questions, though, Theos. We've already gone ahead with that. Uh, our first person to with the question today is uh, Sharon. Sharon, are you ready to speak? Yes, I am. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for being here, Theos. This is the first time for me. Very nice to meet you. I, uh, I really appreciate yeah, the, the beginning meditation. That was amazing. Inviting you can do it always on your own, and we encourage you to do this always. Thank you. I have a question for a friend of mine, Leslie. Leslie, if you're hearing this, I love you. Um, and she is interested in getting pregnant. And she asks if there's anything else that she can do um, to make it easier and or to, you know, <laughs> to get pregnant. Well, we are not a predictive entity. <laughs> right. <laughs> but we can say that when she puts forth the intention, the next thing she needs to do is forget about it and just let it come and not worry about it. When you ask for something, you are acknowledging the lack of it. And if you are focused constantly on the question, you create ever more distance between that thing that you want and the thing that you are seeking to have. It doesn't come to you because you're constantly saying, where is it, which is saying that I don't have it. Now, in the case of the pregnancy, of course she wants to have her child. We will say she will have a child, but she needs to just let it go for a little bit and keep having fun in the making of the child and focus on the moment and how she will feel as a mother and start visualizing this child in her life and then the child will come. She's been trying quite some time and she has been doing IVF. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about Ask her. We see her doing 
some extra activities in order to get pregnant, and it's okay to do so. It will help her, and she will achieve her goal. But she needs to think about being the mom that she is, and the child will come. That's amazing. Thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, similarly, I've been privileged to be able to have conversations with my children of the future, and I just have a question regarding the timelines. Is that something that it's a separate parallel universe and it's just a glimpse or a possibility of the future I'm going to have with them? Everything is. This is where it gets very, very messy <laughs> in our minds that everything is. Whether or not those children will appear in your experience as you are right now remains to be seen but every possibility that is is or else it would not be a possibility it would not even be a thought everything that exists exists and we can think it if it couldn't exist we couldn't even imagine it so the lining up with it is very variable on the choices that are made on every level. Your children that are in the future, they exist already in their now. The idea is can you shift to the now where they are or will you shift to the now where they are? That is something we can't tell you. We can't tell you definitively because there is an aspect of you that has birthed those children, that is with those children. And the visions and the interactions that you have with them in their future tense is the window that opens for you. And we believe it is in your dream time that you actually have those interactions because that is when you are more in touch with your other aspects. So whether or not it happens now, we cannot say to you for sure. It really depends. And what it depends upon, we can't tell you because we don't know. We only can say that it is, like everything, one of the infinite possibilities, but possibilities being infinite are so vast. It's hard to pick just one. And in your larger part of you, you don't have to pick anything. It's all there. And you're experiencing every possibility. Yeah. I know that's not the answer that you want, but that's the answer that is true. I love it. Thank you very much. And our mother has one as well. Mm. Hi, I'm Julie. Hi, Julie. I did have a question, but now I just feel wonderful in the now, in the moment. Mm -hmm. We pick up with you, Julie, some stomach issues here mm -hmm. in your in your lower body. Mm -hmm. We think you are eating too many spicy foods. <laughs> hmm. And there's irritation in your stomach lining. That has been a couple days, but I have to eat more plan. <laughs> if you like your food, then make sure you buffer it with something like milk or yogurt. Ooh, I don't like either one. <laughs> Those foods are cooling, and you are eating heat. I I see. I, mm. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, next we have Sure. Sure. Are you ready with your question? Yes. Greetings, Theos. How are you? We are always. We like to end there because that's really the truth. We are good here. Thank you. Um, last time that we have spoke, mm -hmm. I asked you if my guides or my higher self have um message for me for, um, I don't know, to do some studies or to work at something. It's, 
Uh, you told me that um, I'm going to have something in May. We stand by that. Can you expand on that? One moment. Are you studying something to do with filmmaking? Uh, I finished my studies, but something about that interest, interest <clears throat> about that field is something so negative that I considering of learning a second job if I'm going to enter it. So I have uh, like an escape route. Those are your choices. Whatever you bring to whatever you do, you can decide if it's negative or positive. It's what you bring to it that will determine how it is. We always think that if you have a plan B for something, you should pursue it. Because if you're already thinking of a way to not do what you thought that you wanted to do, maybe you should go explore something else because your heart is not in it and is no longer a passion and perhaps you're only looking for ways to not do the thing that you say that you want to do. It's okay to do whatever you want. But we saw you working in your field of filmmaking in some way, shape or form. It may be only on an entry level, and maybe that is more the frustration of not being able to step into a higher role, but that is the type of paying your dues that you have when you first begin working. Let your life unfold and not question every step, because the things that you experience in the midst of just being can sometimes surprise you and take twists and turns you can't anticipate. It's not that we don't like the question, but we don't like the question. And we will tell you why. Because if you make your choices based only upon what we tell you, or based only upon what someone else tells you, then you never think for yourself and you stop yourself from moving forward because you're always questioning every every action we want you to just go for it point yourself in the direction of where you believe you want to be and then you will end up probably somewhere completely different but then maybe it's exactly what you want Take a risk, follow the path that is the most obvious before you, and don't question everything. Just walk forward. You can always change direction, but we think the world would be lost if someone such as you did not bring your voice to film. That is what we have to say to you on that. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay. Jeremy, can you unmute, please, and, uh, and ask your questions? That, um, that what I see and what connected to, which is great, um, it's you know real, and it's not fake or you know I'm faking it. And I'm just want to ask if, if I'm right, you know the way I feel. Okay, please state make your statement again because it was very difficult for us to hear you. Um, that I feel like I'm connected to the grace, right? But people um, are saying that what I'm saying, 
my sort of, because I feel like I'm connected to the grave, and people say that I'm not, and I'm faking it. So um, I just want to know if I'm right. When you are connected, what do you feel? What I'm saying I feel like I'm connected to the grave, and people say that. I feel um, like um, I feel like you know, like conditional, unconditional love, and them. Um, so how is that ever anything but what is? That is the great. That is the divine, the unconditional love. No one else can tell you. This is what we say all the time, and we're very pleased with your question because the connection is only something you can experience if you experience it. And anyone that would tell you that you are not connected, how could they ever really know? But love is what the divine is. The unconditional love is that thing. That is who we are. That is what the connection is all about. So of course you are connected. Your connection can deepen. Your connection can ever grow. But that is true for all of us. Even us who stand on a different dimension that is specifically love. We can even go deeper. So yes, you are connected. And we wouldn't doubt that for a moment. We don't doubt you. Don't doubt yourself. But don't look for that confirmation from other people. We even don't necessarily want you to look to it from us because it's such a personal connection. But if you are feeling love, it can only be that. When Karen was a little girl and we started talking to her, the first thing we said to her was, we love you. That was our first utterance to her. And she was so very excited and she told her mother and she told her family that she was talking to God. Now we never said we were God, she just assumed we were God. But other people would say that is not possible. It's probably something evil. It's probably in your mind. But she had read in the Bible that God was love and she knew that anything that was of love was of God was divine and as she grew she knew the difference but she never doubted her connection to us and when your first utterance is I feel love you are experiencing the downpour of who the great, as you call, very good words, is you are connected. Stay with your connection and let it deepen. Never doubt what you know. Don't let other people tell you what you know. Because you are what you are experiencing. You're experiencing a downpouring of love, but you're experiencing this because this is who you are. You are opening up to you, experiencing you in the fullest sense. And there's nothing better than that. So keep feeling. Keep walking in your connection. You are connected. We are so happy for you that you are. Theos, Jeremy is asking if you can help him connect with his gray aspect, uh, the one he calls Zeth. Is that possible? 
Yes, we would say that you would do it very much in the way we did the meditation in the beginning. We give Karen a symbol and we gave it to her when she was quite young. It's a dove and we always said, a dove you will see when you speak to me and she sees this white dove in her eyes. She sees it with her eyes open and with her eyes closed. And it's the moment she sees it, she feels that connection opening up. We would encourage you, because we can't do it for you, we would encourage you to ask your higher self for some sort of symbol, some sort of visual or it could be auditory, but visual seems to work the best. Maybe you get it through automatic writing, or maybe you just see it in your mind's eye with some sort of visual thing that when you make your connection, you can focus and begin to look for that. And when it appears, you will know that you are, in fact, connected. As we're speaking to you, we see a purple orb of light and we think that that is for you to focus upon. We do not know this being that you speak about, but if it's your higher self, then it's for you to make that connection. But we do see this purple orb as representational of this being. So as you sit and begin to do your oming and your breathing, focus on this purple orb, visualize it in your mind and see yourself moving ever closer to it. See the light of it growing. And when you get to that very centered place you get to when you om, and we hope everyone did this, and wasn't only writing down questions. Then, when you get to that very centered, quiet place, just sit in the presence of it. There may not be any direct interaction at first, but again, this is a marathon, not a race, and the connection is lifetime long. You have all the time in the world to make the connection. But sit in the presence of that purple orb and listen. Take a pad of paper with you and a pen and write things down. And you will begin to get information and make the connection. But we would say to you, instead of asking a lot of life questions, just get to know the being. Introduce yourself. Be appreciative that the being is there to teach you and to guide you. And ask about the being. And then you will find that you will get so much from it. Does that answer the question? Yeah, thank you. And I really needed that. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, next we have Michelle. Michelle, are you ready? I am. Good morning, Theos. Good morning, Michelle. Beautiful to share space with you. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of have an open-ended question um, because my 3D life is like rapidly, <laughs> it seems to like everything is happening all at once and I don't have a particular feeling of what I'm supposed to do with this. So I was going to ask if it's okay to ask. Um, just for an open-ended um, reply, 
something to get me motivated. I have to move, and I literally refuse to pack boxes right now. <laughs> I just, I'm not feeling it. So no, Don't do it till you feel it. Give yourself the break. That is what we would say. You will manage when it's time. Mm -hmm. We are not going to yell at you or tell you you must do something. We know you will. We don't understand why you want to be punished in a way for not doing something. But we also would encourage you to ask for some help. Not just you doing it, but yeah. get some help. Plan a day where people can come in and help you. And then it will be more of a party, a more celebratory experience. Okay. You have resistance because you have been told to do something yep. and you don't like to be told to do anything. So this <laughs> is the last stand <laughs> of rebellion that you can <laughs> muster. Right. In the end you will acquiesce, but yeah. not until you're good and ready. That is your that is one of your strengths. <laughs> also so, very funny. Make so, a party of it. Okay. And it but is good practice. Perhaps leave something behind that you will be symbolic. Yeah, like most everything. Sometimes how I'm feeling. <laughs> Pack a That's suitcase. also okay. Yeah. You realize this is your opportunity to let things go. And that also the confrontation of evaluation for you is quite big because in letting things go, that opens you up, it lightens you up. And there's the ego part of you that wants to hold on to things. Definitely but you can let them go too. You might surprise yourself. That would Karen shock. is telling us for you to go and listen to the clutter buster <laughs> because this is the moment. Yes. See it as a gift. See it as a gift to let things go even though you don't want to too much. This is your opportunity, but we do foresee that you may need a little bit of help in right. that. I really appreciate that. And mm -hmm. also just to have um, a loving, your loving presence is just really nice too. <laughs> so thank you. We are so happy to speak with you. Much love. Thank much you very love. much. Okay, we have a question from uh, member Jasmina. Let me get to her question. She says, hello. <laughs> the OM meditation was amazing, and thank you. Mm. She has a question. She says, the topic of the day is conditioning of the society, particularly conditioning from parents and the society in her. Do you have any thoughts about how she can feel more free about herself without without feeling shame you know, uh, from the restrictions. So the, the topic that you began early on of, of the session, uh, so she's wanting to know what she can do about conditioning, social conditioning. Was that our topic? Yeah, you kind of brought it up at the beginning about the conditioning of uh, the realities and things. We have no memory of our past conversation. We only live in the now. Please restate this very intricate question because we want to give service to it in such a way that we could not do without further understanding the question. Okay. 
Mm. Her topic we is... We find it quite humorous, and we must say we find it quite humorous. It's interesting. Her, her topic is social conditioning. So social conditioning here on the planet, particularly the conditioning that she received from her parents. And she's wondering uh, if you have any thoughts that would help her feel better uh, about the shame and the restrictions that she feels because of this conditioning. Okay. We see within your question an assumption on your side that everything your parents did in their conditioning of you was somehow wrong. We don't see it that way. We see their sharing or teaching of you being based on what they knew in the moment and what they believed was correct. The basis of it for them being their love for you. You teach what you know. You also teach sometimes what you need to learn. If you know differently that life should be different, then it's your choice in this moment to live your life the way you believe. We would also say to you some of the things that they taught you may not be so far off the mark, if they are at all. Mm -hmm. But you have the choice for how you react to a situation, and you have the choice in the actions that you take. That is your responsibility, and we would like you to let go of the barrier you hold up for yourself on your so-called conditioning for your life, it's only an excuse for why things aren't the way you want them to be. The fact that you have the freedom even to answer the questions means that you are not, excuse me, to ask the question means that you are not bound by anything. Your mind is free to think whatever it wants. And if your mind can think it, then you can act upon it. Our answer to you is that you let that go. Let it go. People in their moments teach what they know. Pretty much everyone does their best. We know you are doing your best and we'd like you to give your parents also that consideration and that pass of judgment against them. The question is not really how do you overcome your conditioning, but it's how do you let go of your judgment about what you believe was put upon you. You need to see them as beings also walking around with a blinder on, so to speak. As you grow older, you might find the very things that they taught you, you also now agree with in some way, shape, or form. So let go of the blame of them. That is how you overcome the conditioning, because you realize that in the moment, you can only make the choices based on what you know. So if you know different, choose different, but love them. That is the greatest tribute you can give to anything or to anyone. And that is our answer. Thank you, Teos. Yeah. Uh, Alan, are you uh, ready for your question, please? Yeah. Um... I just want to say, Theos, I, I really enjoyed your meditation at the start. It was really Thank nice. You. Thank you. Um, as for my, uh, oh, sorry. That's it. Uh, as for you. my question, okay, cool. <laughs> as for my question, um, I'm just wondering, um, 
how do the different aspects of myself affect the life I'm living now? They do and they don't. Because some things you don't know and some things you do know. The things that bleed through can cause you to make different choices and have different perspectives from a different situation. But the aspects of your other lives that are right now. Your other life may be sitting in a restaurant having a very nice meal, but you in this lifetime probably aren't tasting what is being eaten by the other aspect. Some things bleed through. They give us additional perspective and vice versa. So not only are they bleeding through to you, but you are bleeding through sometimes to them. So if you have that knowledge, do your best. Be your best, because that is what will bleed through. If you live your life of love, the other aspects of you will, in some cases, experience that love and vice versa. So, take what you know and live your life and then eventually when you do pass over or reach a state of enlightenment such to the degree that you can interact with all of your aspects at once, you can have a grand conversation about how this one affected the other one. But really, it's not that important. What's important is what you do now, in your now. So with that information, choose love. Choose to be your best. And think about your influence on them versus their influence on you. But you're all one. We're all one. We all influence each other, and it's not just the aspects of you that bleed through on you. We bleed through on each other. I would say to you, it's more important about how you treat your neighbor, the person that you can see with your eyes and touch with your hands. It's more important how you treat them than to worry about how some aspect of you is doing. Love everyone be that and you won't have this question at all because you will be so busy loving and being it won't matter what's going on around you that is our answer for you thank you hmm. Sarah are you ready for your question yeah hello Thea. hello Sarah Greetings. Greetings. Um, my question is more towards the idea of just being. It still feels uncomfortable. Being? <laughs> yes. Being. Are you not being now? I am being now, however. Um, just sitting and not knowing. It's the unknown, basically. Not knowing what's happening, not trying to plan everything, because my mind, I'm a very... Why do you not wish to plan? It's what is wrong with planning? You see, then I try to control it. We don't see the problem in planning. We see that your issue is not controlling, it's execution. Yes. What is your plan? Anything. I have. There's the traveling. There's the getting the customers for the channelings and the healing. There's mm -hmm. the sharing information to the community so that I can spread the word about ascension and, and uh, you know, healing and giving and all this stuff. There's. I, 
I just feel like there's a lot, and then it tells me to sit down and do nothing. Who, what, it? It's energy, higher self. What do you what want to do? You, I want to do Sarah. I love to do. Then do them. But what about the idea of just being and not doing so much? Anymore? Where did it ever see say that when you want to do, you want to do a lot of things? You don't yeah. stop being because you're doing things, and you don't stop being because you're not doing anything. You need to decide. You, Sarah, needs to decide what she wants to do, and do it or not do it. But it doesn't come because you sit there and wait for it to land on your lap. That's that very I mean. rarely happens. <laughs> Life happens through action. Take action. Well, I put forth all this action, hmm. and then it seems like it blew up in my face. Well, then do it differently. Do it again. Do it another way. Everything isn't guaranteed to work. You may have done something in a way that created the result of blowing up in your face. Maybe not try to do everything at once, but pick one thing and make a good plan, and then execute the plan. And when you find it's not working, change the plan. But action is what makes things happen. You don't build a house by sitting in front of a piece of empty land and staring at it. You get up and you make the house. Being is what you are. You can't not be. But it doesn't happen by sitting and doing nothing. There is a fallacy in that, because if you've done it and nothing has happened, then you know that it doesn't work. Take responsibility for what is not going well in your life, as well as for what is going well in your life, and take action. Perhaps you need help in planning. Perhaps you need help in learning to make a business. What you are talking about is an actual business. Yeah. You don't have experience in running a business. So get help in running the business because there's practicalities of doing things. There's ways to find customers. Yes, energy will bring people to you, but that energy is activated by action not by sitting and waiting. Waiting means you are waiting for something to begin. Action is the doing of it. This law of attraction thing that is part of the universe and it is a truth has been completely misrepresented to humanity you don't sit and wait for your life. You go and you live your life. It's exactly what we said to Shear. Take action. If you find the things that you are doing, you are not doing them well, then get help. Just because you are spiritual does not mean you know everything. There are people who know the aspects of what you do not know. That is why we are a collective. Everyone has their role. Utilize other people's knowledge. Utilize what they can teach you. We all have so much to learn from each other. It's, I feel like I'm in a place where I don't exactly know where to go. We would encourage you to choose one thing. We would encourage you, and we are saying to you, ask for help. Mm -hmm. Make a plan of, if only a small outline, of what you want your business to be, what you want your life to be. Things about traveling. Traveling is just traveling. What is that? Be more specific. I, Sarah, am a healer. 
I want to heal people. I want to have a practice where people come to me or I go to them. But that has to be initiated. Somebody has to do the work of it. And because it's your desire, you need to activate it. So find a business class or someone who can help you set up a business. Find someone who is actively working and ask them how they began. But do something. The road to what you want to do begins with the first step of doing it. It doesn't just fall upon you. We don't know how else to say that to you. But maybe it's good if it blew up in your face because it teaches you that that is true. So now it's time to brush it off and say, okay, I learned that. Now I'm going to do it differently. And do it differently. We know you can achieve whatever you want. But don't think that it will just appear it will come from your action and don't think it has to be this enormous thing from the beginning be happy when you have one client when you have two clients you can do it Sarah you really can do it you have all of the tools you just don't know how to use them yet but that's okay write out what you want and start with asking for help and then you will get a much clearer picture about how to do what it is you want to do but we know you can do it you wouldn't have the desire to do it if it wasn't possible your students and your clients are only waiting for you to step into your role it's not you that's asking for this it's not you that's wanting this it's them calling it forth out of you they're just waiting for you to step into that role but it doesn't mean because you say hi I'm Sarah I'm a healer everything else falls into place there's practicalities and logistics and those are the things that you can use help with yes so go get some help Thank you. don't be so proud <laughs> we love you love you too thank you so much you're welcome well Christine are you ready for your question greetings yes I am greetings uh, I, I have a chronic cough that I've had most of my adult life and I'm 68 so that's been quite a long time um, is there a reason for it? Because medically they can't find a reason. We want to say to you that it's acid reflux irritation of the esophagus that is causing you to cough. And is there a way I can naturally um, main, or manage this and not take uh, medicines that usually have side effects that cause other problems? It can be managed through diet, but that will be an exploration on your side to work with a dietist okay. or looking at foods that irritate acid within your system. Acid, okay. Acid reflux. The acid, as it comes up, it irritates your esophagus and causes coughing. You have a dry cough in a kind yeah. of <coughs> cough. Is that correct? Yeah, it happens uh, all sorts of places, and I'm not usually eating. Like it, Acid reflux doesn't happen when you're eating. It happens in the digestion process of food. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And we have member Sam here with a question to you. We would like to take just one drink of water. One moment. Okay. All right. We'll take a short moment here.
Okay, we are ready. There you go. Sam, are you available? Yes. There you are. Hello, Hello. Dios. Hello, Sam. Um, I have a question about anger issue. Mm. It's been going on for a few years for me now. I, I've been trying to control it, but I seem not been able to let go. There's a couple of people that keep attacking me from behind the scene. Uh, this is regarding business. And um, you know, I try every way I can to let go, but it just keeps coming back. I, I want to know, is this a contract that I have that I have to overcome, or is just me personally just cannot let go? Uh, need some help on that. Thank you. We would like to take one moment to just see the situation and then we will respond to you. So just give us one moment. When you are experiencing explosive anger and seething anger, it is because of the feeling of being threatened in a way. And we don't mean threatened with your life, but threatened as far as your stability, as far as your well-being, and as far as your self-esteem is incurred. Is we're hearing something. As far as your self-esteem is concerned, anger is really an expression of fear. And we don't mean fear as in you want to run away, but fear in you fear that these people are taking something from you in an unfair way. This is a recurring idea for you. And therefore, the reaction is the wanting to fight back, but then at the same time, being angry at the fact that this is occurring. It compounds itself like fire and grows. This is not only these people that you have anger against but sometimes it can be quite explosive in other ways. And it is something that you particularly came into this world to master. So you can also say, well, it keeps coming back because I haven't quite mastered it yet. The problem with fear we don't want to say it's your problem, but we will say the issue of fear and the issue of anger is that they are cyclical. And the more fearful you become, the more you have the idea of someone is taking advantage of me, someone is trying to take something from me, someone is uh, attacking me, someone is undermining me that fear compounds itself and becomes self-propagating. By thinking it, you experience it. By experience it, you give yourself proof that it's happening. By getting the proof that it's happening, you bring more of it to you. It is like a magnet or a snowball going downhill. And then your reaction is the one of, am I being taken advantage of? Yes, I am. Is this happening again? And then the anger that comes from feeling out of control to stop it. And in wanting to stop it, that anger builds into a crescendo of an outburst. And that might be just yelling. It might be a little bit of violence. We see you having quite visceral of a reaction within your body. The thing that we would say to you, the mantra that we would give to you is to say to yourself, all is well. All is well with me. All is well with me. Remembering that nothing is really real. There is nothing that can really hurt you in this world. 
It might feel like it is, it might seem like it is, but truly nothing can hurt you. And until you have that click of recognition that that is true, this will be your challenge. We are not saying to you, go forth and be angry, but we would challenge you to just remember, this is just a shadow play. We will do something with you right now, and we want you to hear it, and we want you to participate. Are you willing to yes. do so? Okay. Yes. We want you to know that you are divine. You are a being of light. Now we're going to play a little game with you. And you are going to say, as we ask you a question, we are going to say to you, are you your hands? And your answer will be, no, I am not. And we will say to you, if you had no hands, who are you? And your response will be, I am that which remains. Okay? Okay. Okay, so, are you your feet? No, I'm not. Well, if you had no feet, who are you? I am that that remain. remains. 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 Are you your hands? No, I'm not. If you had no hands, then who are you? I am that that remains. If you had no body, would you still be you? Um, the answer is yes. Yes, yes. Why? Because I am that that remains. So, if you have no body, and you are that which remains, that is the purest part of you. That is your soul. If you can imagine yourself with no body, then you could join us here because we have no body, so to speak. We are light. But that is who you are. You are eternal. You are that thing. And all these other things do not make you the deepest part of you. So when you experience people, things, you just have to remember that it's the ego part of you. And we don't say ego as in a negative thing. But we will teach you something else. This world is designed to keep you here, in this world, in this existence. Because if you weren't kept here, you would be where we are. Your body holds you here, holds that part of your consciousness. That is the deal you make with your body. Your breath keeps your body alive and holds you here. This whole world, this interaction you have with it, holds you here. But you are so much bigger the ego part of you has forgotten that we are more. But we are that which remains. We are those things. So the ego part of you doesn't remember. It's not really allowed to remember. Because if you were thinking only about being in where we are, we would all let go of our physical existence and cease to be. So the ego part of you gets afraid because it wants to keep you here too. So in the moments where you feel threatened by people, by what they're doing, their manipulation, and we're not saying to you what they're doing is not real. There's a difference, you see. You can experience things other people do because they do do them. But the ego part of you feels threatened because the ego part of you doesn't know that once you disappear, you don't stop ceasing to be. But you know that you are bigger. So when someone is doing to you something, they are just doing something from the awareness 
of not realizing who they are, the bigger part of them. But you know that you are bigger, that you are eternal. They may not know, but you do. And in that, perhaps you can not be so concerned because you really can't lose anything. You can lose your hands, you can lose your body, you can lose your feet, but you are that which remains. And that's something to be quite joyful about. And that is the secret of being. So when you feel angry, just remind yourself, this is all just part of life experience. And my great lesson to learn is to remember who I am. Nothing else will really affect me too much. Do you understand? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, I have another question. Um, the last couple of weeks, I've been so tired. <clears throat> I feel I'm getting a lot of um, energy downloads, and mm. and I'm just um, just feel real very tired. Isn't well, drink more water and sleep more. <laughs> Eat good food. Okay. So take care of yourself. If your body's tired, you should sleep. Okay. Eat good food. Don't eat food that is heavy. Okay. Well, I, I, I do eat energy. Um, I do eat a lot of vegetable and, and salmon, but no no meat. I don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's it. Just eat better. That's correct. Breathe. Breathe. Okay. Smile. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Theos. You're welcome. Pass on the mic. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sam. Next we have Shanman. Shanman, are you ready to speak? Good morning. Thanks for having me. Good morning. I have a question regarding the objects up in the sky that I'm seeing. It looks like there's new new lights or new new stars or new planetary objects. And I was wondering if you had any information on that. Thank you. There's always something new to see. We would say if you really understood the way light works, those objects can't actually be new, but new to your awareness, and maybe just now their light is coming to Earth. But if they are now just appearing, they're quite, quite old. We will also say and we know this is the better answer and perhaps the one you're seeking. But the veils around the world are also lifting and things that were formerly not visible are becoming visible because your eyes are opening. Not everyone will see what you see, but quite a few will see it. It's time for them to be seen, or else they would not be visible. What that means is only that new things are coming. In the astrological way, you could look at it as new aspects influencing the planet. But we will just say to you that as light and time travels, it is now reaching the point where it can be seen. That's really the only answer. But we are able to see things now that we couldn't see before as well. Thank you. It's time Thank for them so to be seen. Thank you. I, I agree, and I'm, I'm ready to. Um, I'm ready for this. Thank you so much. You're Okay, next we have Valerie. Valerie, are you ready for your question? Sure, Dan, thank you. Why are we seeing pink around Valerie now? Seeing what? Pink and purple. Pink, pink. and purple. Oh. Mm, I might be ascending just a little bit, I hope. 
I've been in a very, very good mood, and I feel like the energies are changing here for sure. Um, mm -hmm. When I'm outside, it's particularly, even the air smells different. It smells cleaner to me. Mm -hmm. um, with all our meditations for clearing the air and clearing the water, is this helping the earth? Do you need me to answer your question? I probably just answered it myself. <laughs> yes, it's helping. Of course it's helping. It's cyclical and it doesn't mean that you're done, but there is a perpetual motion that has begun and is more beings, earth beings, other beings, send forth that positive energy, it will continue to transform. Your ability to perceive it is even more exciting than the transformation, though it is all connected, just as our former question about something being in the awareness now that was not in the awareness before. It has to do with that planet that he's seeing, those stars that he is seeing are very old, but now they're finally, it's finally time for them to be seen. And now for you, you're getting to experience direct manifestation of intention with proof that it's happening through the smell of the air, through the feel. That has everything to do with your ability to fee feel and be aware, but also the fact that it is happening. It's nice when you have the proof. That's wonderful news. So we mm -hmm. all should continue to do the meditation and to continue to uh, cleanse the earth and bring about our new earth then. Do you need me to answer that question? Well, no, I guess I don't. <laughs> Thank you so much, Theo. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. And lastly, we have Sharon. Again, Sharon, are you ready? One moment. Oh, okay. Karen's nose itches. Oh, okay. We can handle Karen's nose. You're okay. Sharon. Yes, hello. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my question is similar to the one a couple previously, and it regards my dreams about seeing phenomena in the sky, and I was wondering if you could give me any insight on that as well. Um, yeah. What specifically is the question? Um, I'm always, in my dreams, I'm always looking up at the sky, and I see, you know, lots of uh, phenomenon in the sky, like it's either crafts or stars rearranging. It's um, always different in every dream, but it's same idea of looking up at the sky and you know seeing these things happen or being. Happen. We will say to you that this is not so much a dream, but a happening that you're participating in, in perhaps another dimension or another timeline. Yeah, we'll very you... hmm. Sorry, please. You're cutting in and yes, out. It, I... Oh, I'm sorry. I was just agreeing with you. Yes, it's very real to me. Mm. And do you remember every aspect of the dream when you awaken? Can you hold the memory of this dream for days and continue to remember as opposed to a yes. dream where you can't remember. There's a difference Absolutely. between a dream and an, an occurrence or a experience. And if you can remember once you awaken and then continue to remember, it's as if it has happened. And it's not even as if it's happened, but it has happened. It just did not happen in the realm of waking consciousness. Will you tell me we who the beast Sorry. It's only because there's a slight delay and you speak and when we speak and it's quite close together. Please describe to us the beings and we will 
try to know who they are. Okay. Um, uh, there is like spiral stars in the sky, and I could tell that there was a huge craft, um, but a lot of activity in the middle, and then people about five or six beamed down onto the ground, and then they flashed into human beings, or the appearance of human beings, and then we hugged. We all hugged. And what do they look like before they transform? Uh, shadows of uh, shadows and or light. A big light. Well, we would just say to you, and we are not particularly understanding if it's a race or not, but we will say that they are in two ways teaching you. They are showing you themselves as they are, as light, and then showing you that it is indeed possible to take on a body to house themselves here for the experience of this environment. You cannot experience the environment where you are as light the same way you experience it in a flesh body. So they are also showing you how really the body is truly a housing unit of a soul. But their soul is there and that is what you are seeing. So we are not completely sure who the races are and we are not actually sure that that's really relevant. But what is interesting is the fact that they take on the body when they come to Earth in order to interact with you. That is what is experienced for you there. So that. you're getting to see how that works. There's a lot of beings that do this. They are light, they come, mm. and then they take a body and walk around, and then when they leave, they let the body go again. That's in fact what we are doing on Spaceship Earth, really. We take this body, we walk around, and then when it's time for us to go, we let it go. We just don't remember that that's what we've done. So you're getting a couple different lessons there. But we would say to you, these are experiences and not dreams. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you so mm. much. You're welcome. Karen has a dream lately, we won't share, about interacting with a certain group of people. And in each dream, the conversation picks up where it left off before. So she knows now that this is something that she is doing and it's not anything exciting like spaceships landing. It's more like drinking tea and making bread, but it's also experiences of going back to a certain place, having an interaction, and then picking it up the next time. So if you're continually doing this in your experience, this is something that is very normal then. You aren't shocked in your experience when the ship lands. If you're hugging the beings, you know them. So just be excited that there's the part of you that's doing all the things that you want to do here on this earth. There's a part of you that's already doing that. And you're just experiencing it when this part of you is asleep. That's what we want to say about that. Thank you, Theos. We have one last question from Christopher. Christopher's going to be our last uh, public question for today. Okay. Thank you. Hello, Theos. How are you? Christopher here. Hi, Christopher. We are fine. fine. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just a quick question, uh, Theo, um, and it's just regarding uh, myself, really, my well-being. Um, yeah, I make a conscious effort on a daily basis to try and de to deflate my ego, okay? And mm -hmm. that can become a challenge for me. Um, mm -hmm. I do quiet my mind daily, either through meditation, um, forest walks, or listening to music that I like. But I can still become challenged by my ego, so stopping my analyzer can be difficult. Trying to quiet my mind at times can be difficult. Mm. And my ego can challenge me 
and when it does challenge me, I can be somebody I don't want to be, and that can upset me. So I would just like your opinion on that, please, um, before you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Well, your ego has quite a reputation in your own mind, the way you speak about it. We would encourage you to maybe not try to squash your ego, but let your ego be that choice of action as opposed to letting it take over or you fighting with it. We would encourage you to bring in other opinions within your own mind and what we mean is is that you are seeing the ego is quite powerful. We would encourage you to bring in the aspect of you that is equally powerful and then in every moment take the middle path of choosing what you want and how to react. The ego is attached to the physical plane. The ego is what keeps us in the non-remembering of who we are. We needed that ego when we first came here because if not, there's no reason to come. And we say that and we know that puts a question in a lot of people's mind, but we came into this world not remembering who we are for the most part. But you can also make the ego stronger by sparring with it. It has sort of the home court advantage when it comes to earth dwelling and 3D life. But you have enough awareness we would encourage you to slow down, however, because the ego always wins in reaction if it's quick. We would encourage you to be more contemplative. That is when they talk about mindfulness. It's become quite a chic term in the world. But hold your reaction always. That's also being in the moment. If you're walking along and someone shouts to you, hey, and you immediately turn and respond, you don't know what's going to come out. And then you go through this, I'm not reaching my goal, I'm not walking my path, I'm not being the being that I believe that I am, and what's wrong with me, and all the things and it's just useless to do because it never ends but a contemplative path contemplative reaction is one where you make the choice on how to react in every situation in every moment it's a slower response monks walk around like this And they're slow to respond because they're choosing their reaction. They don't wrestle with the ego. They just hear, see, and then choose their response out of the contemplation that comes from the meditation and they try to walk constantly within that meditation. There was a great guru in India who the whole day walked saying Ram, 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 Ram. And that's the name of God, Ram. And in his contemplation of God, he had to stop to react to something because he was only thinking of the divine. The moments we react in ways that are not pretty, that are not in love, is because we've forgotten our divine connection. We know within you, you hold that space of being completely in tune and completely centered. 
but when you stop your meditation or something challenges you, you realize how off-centered you've become. Yes. Well, there's nothing to do other than to notice that you've become off-centered. So we would try to say to you, hold that centered space always and give yourself that ability to react slower and always say to yourself, I choose my reaction. And when your ego is screaming, let it scream in your head. And then you may even say to it in a cheeky way, are you done? Now I will react. Yes. Be the master. It's mastery because it's an overcoming of something. Yeah. Yeah. It's easier it's said easier than said. done. Yeah, I think there's a lot of fear behind it also, like, you know. And it, well, fear is another entity. Start to picture everything as an entity within itself. Fear, ego, joy. You choose who with you want to hang out. Yes. So you can say to fear, okay, I acknowledge you. I'm feeling fear at the moment. But now I'm going to look to joy. Now I'm going to look to centeredness. Now I'm going to look to love. And let the ego yell and scream and have a temper tantrum. But just like a child, when it realizes it doesn't get the attention, it won't react so much. But we will say it may put up a fight in the beginning. And that's okay. It's just the universe giving you the opportunity to learn this lesson. And we would say to you, it's so beautiful that you are working on the intricacies of yourself and that your desire is to stand in your centered love part. But you don't always get there in a moment. In all the things that come up, it's only necessary so that you can purge them. Yes, it's an ongoing process, Tios. Thank you very much. It's an ongoing process, but that's okay. There is no arrival at the destination as long as you're walking the earth. And if you do arrive, we won't be having this conversation. You will be giving this talk. You, yourself, in your waking form, Karen, is not having this conversation. It's her higher self that's coming through. She has her own bouts with her ego. So she's listening right now, nodding along. This is life and expansion and growth. But keep walking your path. Thank you so much, Tios. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. With Theos, we'd like to take this opportunity to close um, the session. Do you have any um, uh, closing words or a blessing uh, for us, the group, the listeners uh, that you'd like to share? Yes, we do. We talked a lot about today, and we thank you for all of your questions and your inquiries. Ultimately, it's all very simple, though it seems quite complicated, getting to be the best you, getting to have the things that you want, getting to make the strides forward in awareness. But it's just a process. And if you can only remember that the eternalness of you doesn't see any limitation in all that you can be, then you will always have the 
idea that it's possible. Nothing is impossible. If you can believe it, if you can dream it, if you can conceive it, it is possible for you, whatever it would be, whether it's seeing a ship, whether it's overcoming your ego, whether it's loving your neighbor, or whether it's starting your business, or for Michelle packing her boxes, it's all possible. So we love you. We want you to love yourselves as well, and especially love the people around you because they need it. And if everyone's loving everyone, then the world will be much better. So bless you. Blessings to you. Much love. And namaste. Thank, thank you so much, Theos. Namaste. Namaste. Namaste, Theos. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste, Thank you, Tios. Hi, welcome back. Would you like a drink of water? Yeah, I, I wanna, I'm clenching my hands. I want to let go. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, you've been in that pose for a while. Uh, yeah. Aaron, that was awesome. Thank you. I think you have on ears. <laughs> she does. She's got bunny ears on. It's Easter. It's Easter weekend. Absolutely beautiful, Karen. That was great. Uh, can you can you hear me, guys? Oh, can yeah, you hear me? yeah, Felix. Now you're oh. working. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice channeling there, uh, Karen. Nice to meet thank you. you as nice well. to meet you too. Hello. Hi. Now the Karen's back. Let's take them out. Sarah, can you do a little, uh, a little uh, light language blessing, and then uh, I have a couple of announcements, and then we'll we'll close out. For the oh, I have an announcement as to when you're ready to. Uh, okay, well let let Sarah do her blessing, and then we'll have Karen go, and then uh, then I'll do the announcements and close okay, out. Okay. All right, I'm gonna mute my mic. Okay. Uh, yes. The. Uh, Syrian and the Nagas today would like to speak. Runtai Akai Sarantia Tia Nuku Katsarini Atulana Sakaya Sukutu Ati Asikiana Parantia Akushata Tarantu Asikiata Kashu Atiana Kutu Ashia Tin Ani Akutu Kasu Lalana Kiasa Shantan Ati Asukutu Anakaya Let's see. 
Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you so much. Does anybody else have anything to add? Karen, your uh, announcement. Um, next week on Thursday, I will have um, Sharon McCormick on uh, a Hukolo or a Google Plus um, Hangout. She will be answering questions about hybrid children. I had her on my radio show last week, and, and it was such an interesting conversation. So she wants to come and do a webinar, and she helps people come in contact with their hybrid kids. So she's really interesting, and that will be Thursday, and it will be between 2 and 3 p.m. Uh, EST. It will be on humancolony.org as an announcement, and I'll also post it on Facebook and all the different groups. So you're invited to come. Especially awesome. all you hybrid kids, mamas, and daddies, huh? Thank you for that. That's awesome. Valerie, did you have something? Yeah, so it sounds fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It does sound like a good time. I'd like to announce the uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Hukulo Hangout. Uh, it's not a hangout. It's a meetup. Uh, from June 19th through June 25th, the uh, summer solstice with travel dates being the 18th and the 26th for those interested we will be meeting in hot springs for that week also the Reiki 3 class is has been rescheduled uh, Reiki 3A will be April 4th Reiki 3B will be April 11th uh, at the same times so I think it's uh, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern um, wow, the other announcement just fell right out of my head. Oh, Jim will be back next Saturday. He will be channeling on April 2nd for everybody. He's feeling so much better, but still not all the way 100%, but much better than where he was. So um, he will be back uh, in the channeling seat next week. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, I will post the Reiki 3 announcement to the Reiki 3 students. And um, we, should, um, we should make some kind of event or something for the uh, hot springs. I'll, I'll work on that and post something so that everybody uh, can see it, those that want to save up and, and come to hot springs for that week. So thank you all, everybody. Karen, thank you so much. Um, Karen can be found on, um, what, what you can be on, a, well, what's the name of that uh, radio? Please. About oneness. You can hear, you can go to my oneness. website is aboutoneness.com and um, you can hear me on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. EST on Pyramid One Network, which is pyramidonenetwork.com. Very. That's simple. the one I couldn't remember. The Pyramid One. The Pyramid just went right out of my mind right there. Right, thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you for uh, being members uh, and thank you for uh, participating in the Hukalo TV and. Uh, and being part of the human colony. Thank you, everybody, for coming, and uh, we'll see you again next week.